Welcome back to another segment of Chariot Week. I am Deanna Johnson, the Director of Family Life for the St. Philip Institute, and today I wanted to bring on Mickey Siba, our catechetical specialist uh, for the Institute. How are you doing, Mickey? I'm doing very well. I always enjoy being able to get in touch with you in person or via Zoom (laughs) to just talk, yeah. Very good. Well, I thought it would be helpful to introduce everyone to to you again if they're not familiar with um, your work um, and especially the baptism program. And you and I co-host the Life Beyond the Chariot series, so we can talk about that a little bit. Um, and just so those of you who are watching know, this is the, the end of Chariot Week. Um, it's a week where we've really have just been sharing the vision of the St. Philip Institute that Bishop Strickland founded in 2017, and really just asking for support, whether that's through your prayers or financially. Um, and it just makes it more possible for us to do what we're doing here and, and even dream bigger. So Mickey, what is your role as catechetical specialist? What does that mean? So just providing expertise and and resources that I have learned along the way in working in ministry, particularly when um, to catechists and to families as they journey through, um, a lot of it is the sacramental time. So uh, with their children, so baptism, first reconciliation, confirmation, first Eucharist. Um, But I've also dabbled a lot in all different kinds of ministry, so um, I kind of help out with lots of things, but a majority of my focus uh, is uh, creating materials on the sacramental preparation formation for kids and their families, and um, doing Life Beyond the Chariot, talking about how to be moms, uh, holy moms, how to be holy moms, (laughs) and um, I worked a lot with high school kids, and so I can help out with the youth ministry, and then even teaching just catechists how to teach. I was a teacher in Catholic schools for 11 years and um, loved every minute of it. And so just learning how to uh, teach kids in the, ed, the religious ed classroom, because it's different and it should yeah. be different. Right. Um, because what we're teaching isn't just a list of facts about our faith. We're teaching about a relationship with Jesus. And so anybody we teach, we also have, it has to come across in the way that we relate to them. Exactly. Um, so just trying to teach people who aren't trained teachers or who um, are maybe experiencing some difficulty, like sort of in the religious ed classroom, like what can we do to help our students, not just know facts about the faith, but live it, be excited about it. I mean, yeah. the Catholic Church is beautiful and um, the teachings are Um, so good and so holy. And when that is conveyed in our teaching and our discussion, and how can we do that while we're also trying to make sure um, people are retaining the information um, for the little kids, like behaving in class, like how do we navigate through all of those things, um, but keeping our focus on teaching people how to live the faith. So. Yes. Oh, no, that's beautiful. And one thing that I discovered after moving here is that our diocese really has this huge, really beautiful network of catechists, just people who are so wanting to share the faith. So as an institute, being able to walk with those catechists and help form them spiritually, but also in the knowledge, so head and heart uh, being able to 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 offer that, so thank you for for the work that you do there. And you mentioned, um, you know, that the faith formation department specifically that you're developing materials uh, for folks specifically in sacramental prep. And you authored the baptism formation program that we have, which is phenomenal. But can you tell us about that? Sure. So that was the first big project I was tasked with when I came on board at the institute. And I try to look at it from all different perspectives. So what would it be like as a parent? Like, what is the process I would go through if I was a a parent who was going through it and about to baptize my child? Um, What does it look like on the parish side to help it easy to sort of implement it? And then how to um, see it from like the catechist side. So who's going to be teaching the class? So I try to put together a comprehensive program that's meant to be followed by the moment someone calls and says, hey, we're looking to have someone, um, like we're looking into baptism for our child, what do we do? That 
the parish secretary has the information, she knows what to do or he knows what to do, the catechists know the material that's covered, the parents know what's to be expected, all the paperwork that comes along with it, but also making sure that it is prayerful mm. um, and sort of being infused with, okay, this is a process, um, so how can we make sure that it's not just like, here's your paperwork, fill it out, turn it in. Yeah. But how can we really turn these, this program into something that is relational? Yeah. Um, that uh, is making sure that we're not just, you know, giving people information, but we're really trying to bring them into the life of the parish, yeah. as well as cover, you know, the sacramental catechesis part about why are we even baptizing our children? And then even what do we do after? Okay, yeah. great. After the baptism, yeah. now what do we do as parents? <laughs> so... No, so I just tried to look at all of those different aspects and put together a whole process. So it's more than just, I guess, a book. Um, it's really meant to be followed as a process from start um, to finish. So no, I love that. So the way of the Holy Family is the baptism program, and it's available um, on the St. Philip Institute website. So stphilipinstitute.org. Um, you can buy it in like parish bundles, I think, and or just as individual packs. Um, and it is beautiful material. And um, I know you're familiar with the Constitution on teaching, Mickey, because yeah, I think that was one of the documents that probably brought you here, like me. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just a phenomenal document. And I remember um, that there's a section where Bishop specifically says that we need materials that are beautiful, that we need materials that like invite people in um, and that they're useful and not just pretty, but it's actually useful and desirable and um, that can lead to a relationship because we aren't just a, a institute of catechesis. It's also evangelization uh, and leading people to relationships. So I love that the, the Way of the Holy Family program is, it's, I mean, it really is more than just a program. It's a, it's a formation process that invites people into relationship. And I know it's very similar to like how we're doing marriage formation, that we're inviting couples into a process that will hopefully lead to deeper relationships within the parish and the larger community. So it's like our departments overlap a lot. <laughs> yes. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, and I'm glad that I'm glad that you mentioned that. And I this is something that I've realized um, most of most of it I realized in my ministry with young people, with high school kids, because they're very honest about uh, where they are with the faith. And they're like, why do why can't the church just make anything like exciting and beautiful and appealing? Yeah. Um, and I know what the and I do think I will say this for the Catholic Church. I think there are a lot of um, places, publishers, you know, institutes who have really worked on creating yeah. this whole idea of beauty. Yeah. Um, and just knowing that that is incredibly important because um, our faith is attractive. And I know that that's not what keeps people there is the fact that things might look pretty, right? It should be that relationship with Jesus, the sacraments, you know, the, the um, Catholic Church as a whole and her beauty of teachings. But yes, drawing people in and making it like, hey, we are excited about what we're doing. Yes. And, you know, the days of, and I, I hope this isn't offensive, but the days of just like sideways copies of a sheet of paper that you give to someone coming in. Right. Um, I mean, I do, I do think we're better than that. Just paying attention to those details. And yeah. I think that um, when people see something that's aesthetically pleasing or they see that effort went into it, um, that it, it's a good way to make um, a, a good first impression, you know, especially yes. since some of these families may be coming back to the church after a long absence um, because children have a way of doing that, right? Uh, saying, hmm, you know, I want, I want faith for my child, and so how do I do that? So there may be people coming back who have been absent for a while and just making sure that it is a process that is inviting, that is attractive, mm -hmm. um, and that's also clear, like here are the clear steps and there's not like confusion there because right. if we create confusion and clarity is not there and what's, what has to exist in, in the process, then that can, it can, not that it should, but it can shy a lot of people away from 
I feel like I shouldn't have to work this hard. Right. <laughs> you know, just to have my child to, baptized or, or just to get yeah. married. Yeah. No, that, that's such a great point. And for those who are, who are just tuning in, um, this is Chariot Week, where we're really just sharing the, the vision of the St. Philip Institute. We're sharing Bishop Strickland's vision for catechesis and evangelization and how the St. Philip Institute is implementing that throughout the Diocese of Tyler and even reaching beyond. I know like the Way of the Holy Family products have been sold beyond our diocesan borders. And just this conversation about, um, you know, materials that are attractive and using that as a, as a means of, of evangelization, um, like that's a priority. And it also, I think, kind of shows that, that, that people are worth it. Like when we're, when we're trying to walk with people um, through sacrament formation or, you know, leading them into this relationship with Christ, it is worth our time, energy, and effort to make sure that what we are giving them is the best. Yeah. Um, or that that it's beautiful material that it's not a sideways copy <laughs> of something an illegal copy of of a workbook <laughs> or something not that that happens in our diocese um, but to really take that time to invest in um, the couples or the the individuals that are coming to us for sacraments and I know I, I I see that a lot with the marriage formation process so again lots of overlap <laughs> between mm -hmm. these two uh, these two departments um, Mickey, how do you see the Institute like really striving to meet the needs of families? Because I think when we hear catechesis and evangelization, I think automatically we kind of go towards like, okay, well, sacrament prep or like faith formation. And we can forget that, well, like families are the seedbed of vocations, marriage is the foundation for the family. And I mean, that's where the seeds of faith are, are really planted. But how do you see the Institute really addressing those needs? So I know it's definitely, it's been part of our um, conversations that we have all the time when, we meeting, when we're meeting, and I know we see it as a priority, and I will tell you, it, it is a difficult um, task to just accomplish, Yeah. Because, um, because families come in all different kinds of sizes, different time restraints, different um, areas of um like where they are in their faith and yeah. even then like as a family each individual in that family yeah so yeah. what i do think is that i do think the institute it is it it is a priority at the institute that we have to evangelize families and it has to start somewhere so i know we've been like okay what do we need to establish this sort of like the structure so we need to have the diocesan program that we're going to use for marriage formation right. and perfecting that. What are we going to use for religious education? Because I know with the Institute, and I'm not sure if everyone who's listening knows about this, but um, the bishop has asked that all of our formation materials be standardized in the Diocese of Tyler, which is hugely beneficial because the bishop knows then what everyone should be learning right? That this is the approved curriculum. The bishop is familiar with it. He knows it. Mm -hmm. Every priest, every, and this is also a great benefit, every priest, once they get the training on it, or if they have exactly. additional questions, um, then either the ones who have written the material or who have instituted um, other materials that we have gotten from, like other publishers are like, this is what we're going to use. We have really studied these things and we're working on the kinks in and out. And so to have that relationship with the priest um, and they can just call their diocese like, okay, here's our situation that us as the Institute, our job is to make sure that we're helping these priests understand the program. We're helping the catechists understand the program um, because the best way I think to have it filtered down into the families mm -hmm. is that what we're using, how we're using it, um, that the leaders in the diocese are sort of experts in it. Yeah. Uh, and so when we can do that um, and start noticing like the families that come are like, hey, we notice that there's a gap right here. We need, our parish needs something else to fill this. Or mm -hmm. that's the great thing about having um, our diocesan family is that I pray that we become a collaborative family that's like, okay, we know what our task is. Let's work with each other yeah. because we know that our families need it and we know that our families are suffering. Yeah. And how can we do that? Because each individual family is different. Um, maybe not each individual family can make it every week <laughs> to whatever class, 
Um, maybe there's, uh, especially in the time of this pandemic, people right. can't just get there or they've lost their jobs or they had to take on other, other jobs just to pay the bills. I mean, we have to accommodate the changing landscape of family life. Mm -hmm. And we have to be at a point where we understand that just because they're not coming to Wednesday night catechesis does not mean they're not prioritizing yes. faith. It could just be that Wednesday is just a really bad day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and if you're talking about families, you know, if my husband's working late and I have four kids and one is sick, well, then I can't bring the other three unless I have some sort of network of people who can help transport my kids. So just understanding that, and we have a lot of parents working at the Institute. And so um, we're always looking at things through that lens. Mm -hmm. And what we are trying to do is not just produce standardized material, because I know this might sound right. like they contradict each other, a standardized material process, but also room to um, accommodate yeah. those things and those situations that, um, right. that come up and that absolutely exist in our culture. And I believe that we are very open to hearing from people, uh, from priests, from DREs, from catechists, like, okay, this is what I'm struggling with. And this is what I need help with. And I think when, when those questions have come our way, we have been more than willing to be like, okay, um, <laughs> let's see what we can do yes, um, yes. to make sure that we can help uh, the parish, the catechist, the DRE, and the family. Like, let's work together um, to progress uh, to progress towards the heart of Christ, to a better knowledge of the faith, the uh, living of the faith, you know. And I, I think that we're on board with that. I'm 100%. And I would say that's a huge goal of ours. Yeah. 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 yeah that's beautifully, beautifully. I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> no, that was perfect. That was perfect. This was like a mini episode of Life Beyond the Chariot, honestly. <laughs> so, no, that was wonderful. And you, um, when, when you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, encountering families where they are, and even addressing like some of the uh, the challenges of just being a family in a time of a pandemic and things like that. One of the things that we've mentioned throughout the week is that um, during Lent this year, I think lockdown happened like at the very beginning of Lent this year, and it really forced us as a team to really reevaluate like, okay, how do we, we're already moving in this direction of, of helping to communicate better with the people of the diocese, but one of the first things that you created, Mickey, was a handout for families when we weren't able to go to Mass, and I want to say that was shared an insane number of times, like thousands upon thousands of times it was it was shared on Facebook, and just having resources like that, and it, it was a really great resource, and I think very helpful to, to a lot of families to just realize, like, okay, we can't go to Mass, but here is something very simple that meets us where we are right now to just guide us through, like, we've never done this before. <laughs> here's, a, here's a way to, um, to still make Sunday a holy day um, as a family. So I just appreciate your creativity and um, you're just full of so many ideas and just helping us to, to get back to, uh, back to the family and, and, and the real life <laughs> experience. Because it, it is really easy to just sit and come up with a program or tell everybody like you have to use this thing, but if it's not actually useful um, to the families in our diocese, then what is the point of, of doing that? Yeah, so. and I, I do want to say one thing too about the materials. I um, if people haven't looked at our materials, I encourage you to even if you just get one copy and actually look through it the way that it was designed <laughs> from point one to point B. I think when we start to like just like not look at it as a whole process and just like, I'm gonna use this and see how I like it. But no, like really invest the time in how it was designed to work yeah. from start to finish. Because um, Deanna, I know it's your program because I've been involved as a mentor couple and I'm a huge fan. I think it's great. Um, I think with the baptism program, and I hate to say this since I'm the one that wrote it because it seems super prideful. <laughs> No, go for but it. But there are, there are elements of evangelization built into the process, but it's not in a handout because that's not how evangelization happens. But it is part of the training that I offer 
Um, it's part of the materials. Um, and it's an integral part of the program. And so if you miss that and just hand them a book, then yes, it's no different than maybe some other books that are out there, maybe by bigger um, publishers uh, that have beautiful work, right? There's, we're not just giving people a curriculum. And the more that we can, the more that people can understand that, that it's not just like, here's a book, read it, answer questions, and then you're be holy, <laughs> you know? Check, check, check. That's not how, yeah, that's not how it works. Like these, especially the sacramental moments, mm. when we're forming people for the sacraments and we have a process of how those people enter it, enter into it, how do they fill out the necessary paperwork? How are they guided through it? Are they being um, introduced to the life of your parish? Mm during that time um is there a post a post sacramental follow-up yeah um all of these things are really important and so i encourage anyone if you haven't looked at it at the materials like gave it gave it an honest look or took training please if this is at all igniting sort of a desire in you i'll send you one for free you right go. if you just want to look at it if you just want to look at it how does the process go um because we offer trainings we are excited about what we're doing we are excited about what the diocese is doing and just like a family if we have if there's a mission in our family if one starts to deviate like i don't like what this family is doing i'm just going to do it my own way well then that can just sort of disband the strength that we were created for mm -hmm. And the bishop has made it very clear that he wants us unify, uh, unified in materials and resources and processes for sacramental formation and the other things that the Institute is doing. And I think as a diocese, man, if, if everyone can get on board with that, yeah. and even if they're not super excited about something, we're a family. And so we can have those conversations. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, and I think we, I think we have to be at a point where we're willing to have those conversations. The land, like I said, the landscape of not just family life, but church life. I mean, the landscape of everything has significantly changed. Yeah. And many of us are trying to like, just figure it out. Um, and so banding together and like, okay, well, these are the clear directives we have from our spiritual leader, who is the bishop. Right. Um, and these are the things he's doing. Well, let's go down the list. Are we doing what he has asked? Right. And are we doing our best? Do we have questions about it? And are we addressing those questions? Right. Do we not understand the process? Do we need to have a training? Um, which I know we would be more than happy to do. And so I think the opportunity before us is tremendous. Oh yeah, I yeah. completely agree. I completely. I know in, in other uh, video segments, we've talked about how, I mean, really what we're called to do as Catholics, I mean, it's, a, it's an exciting time to be Catholic if you think about it, because the it is dark. It, the, the world is very dark right now and it can it can be overwhelming, but realizing that we have this beautiful gift of our faith and that mm -hmm. the really at, at the at the at its foundation the institute exists so that we can help lead people to christ so we can empower parents to do their job as primary teachers of the faith to empower them um, to do mm -hmm. that to lead children to uh to christ and not just check boxes and yeah if we if we're united as a diocese to be able to do something like that like oh man how how bright could uh could our diocese shine um and just the yeah just having that that witness of so many wonderful holy families that that are here and i know we have a lot of people moving into the diocese of tyler yes. which is really great um so yeah just building our family um, oh, this is such a, a great conversation, Mickey. I guess the last thing I wanted to to chat about is just Life Beyond the Chariot, that our, our spinoff series from, from the podcast that was really born from the pandemic, uh, which yeah. is kind of cool, recognizing like, okay, we can't get in the studio to record. Um, so we started like this over Zoom meetings, except you were on the other side of the wall um, <laughs> recording with me. Um, what... 
what do you think that um, Life Beyond the Chariot offers? Uh, I know it's different from the podcast. It's different from Dr. Arredondo's Into the Chariot series. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what what is Life Beyond the Chariot? What does it offer for families? And, and maybe what do you see going forward with that? Yeah, absolutely. So I am I am not an expert theologian by any means. I mean, I did study theology um, in undergraduate and have been in ministry ever since I graduated. Um, but I thought that it would be easier to be a Catholic mom since I since I had a wealth of resources that I I mean I was forced to read tons of theological books in college. Yeah. And I've been in ministry so long that I thought it's going to be. I was like, I'm really set up to be a great Catholic mom. And man, that is not the case. Shoot, it's so hard. It is so hard. Um, and I think what becomes difficult is you can recognize the beauty and truth in the teachings of the church. But then it's like, okay, so how do I explain the Trinity to a three-year-old? Or um, if you have a family member who passes away and your kids are like, wait, where are they? Mm -hmm. You know, like, do you know how to explain um, heaven, purgatory, hell? Like, it, when do you introduce those concepts to your kids? I mean, some of these things, um, well, really anything our kids learn. Um, we have to ask ourselves, like, at what point do I expose my kid to this? When are they ready for yes. this conversation or that conversation? And that doesn't, that discernment doesn't go away just when you're talking about religious formation. You know, there are things that I have found myself really nervous um, talking about. Like my kids are like, you know, when they were asking about um, like heaven or hell or, or heaven, they're like, what, does everyone, is everyone going to heaven? Is that the only place to go? And you're just like, <laughs> And then you're just like, well, there, there, there is another eternal resting place. And like, oh, tell me about it. And you're like, oh, I don't know how to explain. You know what I mean? Right. right. I don't know how to explain this. Or, um, you know, anything about morality. Um, how do we talk to our kids about that? Like, at what point do we introduce them to some of the things that are going on? Um, like the church is teaching, not too early if they haven't already been um, if they're not ready for it, but also right. not too late to where the culture has already got a grip on right. them. Right. Um, those are really difficult places to navigate. Yeah. I think. And I, uh, and I have studied the faith and I find it very difficult to, um, figure out when and how do I explain these things to, uh, my children. And then, also, um, the discernment of how do we as a family, how are we going to be unified in the way that we're choosing to follow Christ? Um, what does that look like? Um, and so things like what does our prayer life look like? What are acts of sacrifice that we're going to make? What is, um, how have we discerned how we as a family are going to use our time? You know, is, is God calling us to um, some type of service instead of watching TV. Um, not that we can't watch TV. I'm just saying like, are we as a family, like asking ourselves, yeah. what does God, want our little family unit to yeah, do? Our domestic church. Yes. In terms of studying his word, teaching others, um, being of service. Um, like, is that at the forefront of families' minds? Is it, you know, and Deanna, you work a lot with, um, engaged couples and married couples. And there is a, a monthly discernment of, with NFP, mm -hmm. right? And so as families, um, our family's doing that. Like, not with NFP, but our family's yeah. in that, like, monthly discernment of, like, okay, God has given us the gift of each other. Mm -hmm. God has given us the gift of our faith, the gift of our community. What are we doing with it? Or what are we supposed to do with it? And I... And it's hard for us to answer that because what God is going to call his family to do is so different. different. Exactly. But what we can do is we can share our stories, which I think you and I do a lot in Life Beyond the Chariot. Um, we talk about things that we have noticed or our own fears or our own joys, um, our struggles and successes. Um, and then maybe through that, 
it might strike a chord with someone and they go in there and like talk about it with their spouse or their kids or um, I mean all of it is to it's not to tell people this is exactly what you need to do but hopefully that inspiring like I need to I need to look into this and I need to pray about it yeah. and I need to bring it before God and our family needs to bring it before God like are we doing what he has called us to do Oh, that's horrible. And it's hard to make a program for that. Right. <laughs> um, but, but I do think, again, like when you look at the Institute, I do, I hope, I pray that people clearly see that we're like, God is calling you to something. Mm -hmm. So first to the Catholic Church, um, to the sacraments, um, to the beauty of God's word and, and the right. teachings right. of the church. Um, but how, but what specifically, like, how is that now going to translate into um, your vocation as a mom or a dad, or if you're a catechist, um, yeah, very practical, very yeah. practical. And so uh, I, that's what we're, that's what we're attempting to do. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So we have these, these beautiful teachings from the church. Now, what do I do with that? Like, oh, I, I believe them. Out. Yeah. I believe them. And it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. Right. right. Um, and I guess just being honest with like, yeah, the struggle is really hard. Um, and working from the church does not reduce any of those. <laughs> right. Having a theology degree does not reduce. Any no, I mean, theory. and I have met far better parents who haven't studied theology that blow me out of the water in how they like handle their children and what they teach them. And I'm like, man, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. And I feel like I'm still we're always learning. Like as our children grow, we grow. As our marriages grow, yep. we grow. And we have to adapt. I think that's what um, an important message is. We have to adapt to what's going on because my kid at 10 was is not the same as they were at nine. Right. My kid 15 is not going to be the same as my now 10 year old that I have here. Um, and with our marriages, right? Who we said I do to uh, at the altar um, they have grown in ways they have experienced other things throughout their life. And so knowing that we have to adapt and grow together, that, um, we're not stagnant. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I tend to ramble, but no, <laughs> no, that was, that was such a great, I get really excited. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm so grateful that we have had this conversation and I just invite people to check out the website, stphilipinstitute.org. Um, we'll put a link to the, the donate button specifically for chariot week. Um, we have specific goals to meet for, for that, just to help us make all of this possible, uh, because it is an ambitious goal as, as Bishop Strickland said in the constitution that this is all of this is a very ambitious goal goal, but we can do this and it takes time, but it, it, it also takes resources. Um, so we're so grateful to those of you who have supported us financially. We're grateful to those of you who have supported us with your prayers um, over the past three years. We're, we're still very young as an institute, but it has been a joy and a blessing uh, to just work with an incredible team uh, of people because um, we all seem to understand that this is bigger than um, just a family life department or bigger than just a faith formation department. This really is a mission um, to change the culture. So again, stphilipinstitute.org. Um, we'll put the link below. And Mickey, where can people um, contact you if they want to learn more about the baptism program? Sure. So um, I'm, I am on the about page when you go through the, the list of employees, but um, my email is just mciba, S-C-I-B-A, at stphilipinstitute.org. Um, email is the best way. I am um, homeschooling slash working from home. And so email is really the best way to get in touch with me. But um, any of my coworkers, I always love for a reason for them to call me. Um, so you can just call them <laughs> and tell them, hey, we need <laughs> We need to talk to, to Mickey, yeah. So, um, but yeah, they can do it that way. And I just one more plug in. The only reason I'm going to say this is because I've actually received a lot of emails um, about this since I've been um, homeschooling the kids. Um, is I also do special needs ministry, yeah. and that has definitely had to take. Um, that could be a very vulnerable part of the um, the population, uh, the special needs community. But I have had a lot of people contacting me. Uh, through email because they've seen that we have a special needs ministry in the diocese. Um, a lot of the things on there are on um, hold, but 
um, I have been able to give people like resources in um, how can they do like religious education at home with their special needs child. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there simply because I have gotten quite a few emails from people. So I just wanted to let people know that if they also need a resource on special needs, um, religious ed or outreach or help or anything to you, they can also contact me for that. Thank you for mentioning that. And if you go to stphilipinstitute.org, I think it's under the family life tab, there is a special needs page um, that talks about all the, the wonderful work that, that Mickey has done. And a lot of that work was possible because of special funding that we received um, to, to address special needs ministry. So we'd love to keep that going as well. So again, Mickey, thank you so much for, for taking the time and, uh, thank you so much to our audience. Um, leave comments, questions below. We will, um, try to answer any questions that you have, um, about, uh, what we're doing. Uh, as far as faith formation or family life departments or just in general what the the institute is um, aiming to accomplish so thank you all so much and uh god bless god bless everybody thanks deanna